I want to do an example of inverting a matrix in the most efficient way. And so A is going to be the matrix 0, 1, 2, 1, 0, 3, 4, minus 3, 8. And the way it works is What we do is we put we make an augmented matrix with A and I. Now in our book he doesn't actually put them together as an augmented matrix, he just writes them next to each other. But um most people just write it as an augmented matrix. Uh hello. Mm -hmm. That's zero one zero. There we go. Just spacing out there. Okay, and the claim is, so we, we really are thinking of this two separate things, it's just we're going to work on them both simultaneously with the same row operations. And there's a few reasons why this works, but let me just go to sort of go through an example and test it, and then we'll talk about um, why this magic thing works. So we're just going to do reduction. This is not an equals, it's I'm going to produce a new augmented matrix that's row equivalent to the first one. Uh, so, first thing i got to do, well, uh, we can do it in a couple orders. Our, our book tends to do reduction and then uh, rearranging the rows at the very last, but most people tend to rearrange the rows as needed to put it into the echelon form, and I'm going to do it that way. So I'm going to notice this is a zero. It's going to be really hard to use a zero to kill anything below it, and so to get into that echelon form, I'm going to go ahead and switch those rows right now. And I have to switch everything. Okay, don't do anything else yet. And um, now, the nice thing about that is that, oh, hey, there's a zero here. That reduces my workload a little bit. I'm not going to do anything more to the first row for a while. I don't need to do anything to the second row yet. And I'm going to take four times the top row and subtract it from the bottom row. And I'm going to get zero. This happens not to change. This turns into minus four. This is minus 4, and this is a 1. Okay. Now, I'm going to keep going with that. And I'm going to go to, uh, I'm going to kill this entry here. And so I'm going to add three times the second row to the bottom row. So that's going to be a 2, minus 4 plus 6. That's going to be a 3, minus 4, 1. Now, let me check and make sure this is working. Yep, so far so good. Now I'm going to go ahead and make that a 1. Something else you don't absolutely have to do at this stage but it's probably a pretty good time to do that. Okay. Notice that's where fractions start to appear here. And now, um, it's, it's, it's actually pretty significant to notice it's the only place the fractions have appeared um, so far, because all the other steps, I was working with the zeros and ones, and um, just creating, just mul playing those off against each other with integer multiplications. So you can actually get all the way to this stage and not use any fractions. It's not really crucial, but it, it turns out to be good for the theory later. Okay, so now I'm going to start from the bottom row. It helps if you actually now start rewriting from the bottom row, because that doesn't have to change. That is the bottom row of the identity matrix. That's what we're trying to get to over here. Um, what we're trying to do, we're doing row reduction, and what we expect to find on the left-hand side is the identity matrix, and I'll discuss that uh, some further in a minute. Now, I just need to take twice the bottom row, subtract it from the middle row, and that's going to be 1 minus 3 is minus 2. That's going to be plus 4. That's going to be minus 1. And then 3 times the bottom row and subtract it from the top row. 
So that's going to be minus 9 halves. 1 plus 6 is 7. And minus 3 halves. Let's hope that's correct. And now, what turns out is that is the inverse matrix. I'm just checking my resource, my source here. OK. Claim is, now this is i, and that's a inverse. And I'll leave it to you to check. Um, it's a really good idea, it's good practice, that if you multiply a, this matrix a, times this one, you do get the identity matrix. Let me just do like one row and one column. Let me do the top row and that column. So 0 times anything is 0. Mm, minus 2 plus 3, that's a 1. Let's just do one more. Let's say this row times this column. 0, 4, minus 4, that's a 0. If you check it out, it actually does make the identity matrix. So that's an example of how you do the procedure. Then the question is, why does this work? Well, there's a couple of good explanations of why this works. So remember the first time we actually ended up doing this. This was something that Mindy showed us. Um, it was solving what seemed to be a rather different question. We had three vectors. Let's call them A, B, and C. And we put them in as column vectors of a matrix. And then the question was, so it seems like a different question. The question was, can we make i, or e1, or in other words, 1, 0, 0, and also j, or e2, or 0, 1, 0, and k, or the more systematic way is e3, equals 0, 0, 1, as linear combinations of those funky vectors a, b, and c. And what did that lead to? Well, we know that taking linear combinations of vectors corresponds to putting those vectors as columns of a matrix and then multiplying by some vector of coefficients. So it was asking about solving these, whoops, these three equations. I'm putting the, these vectors in and then I'm saying, well, is there some vector coefficient, say, x1, x2, x3, that makes 1, 0, 0? And if so, what is that? Well, that's, sol that's our standard problem, solving a, a system of equations. And so that's that, and notice, that's exactly what would lead to an augmented matrix of this form. Everything, the first four columns. And what steps would we do to do elimination on that? We do exactly the same steps we'd do. And what we would get, the answer we would get, is this column. This is the vector of those coefficients. And so that says we've answered that in the affirmative. And in fact, what we've determined is that minus 9 halves times the first column, yeah, minus 2 times the second column, plus 3 halves times the third column, is 1, 0, 0. Or in other words, that this matrix times that column alone is 1, 0, 0, which has two very big significances. One is, that it's i. It's a very simple vector that's useful as a building block. The other significance is it's the first column of the identity matrix. Okay. Well, the same thing is true about the other two columns. We can ask the other two questions. Can I make j out of linear combinations of these three columns with, of course, some different numbers? The answer is yes, because that's what we just did. The middle column on the right-hand side of that, this calculation, in fact, tells me that. Okay, And so, if we separate it back out into three different problems, what we've discovered is this matrix. I keep writing this matrix over and over again, but it's okay. I don't mind. I like matrices. That matrix times these magic numbers 7, 4, 2 turned out to make J. And this matrix 
times the magic number is minus three halves minus one. Oop, time to stop. <laughs>